live in the lust of their flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Now I want you to notice those words, the, the mind. Because here is the battleground. Here is the battleground. There, there is not a person on the planet today that is having a struggle with sin who doesn't have a brain. He said, you haven't talked to my husband. <laughs> no, he's got one. He's still moving around, breathing. You're sending him off to work. He's coming home with a paycheck. He's got one. It just doesn't use it much, man. All right? So what are we saying here? That Prince of the Power of the Air is going to be working on the mind of people to keep them away from Christ, to keep them tied up in the desires of the flesh and the things of the world. But we as Christians... We have to realize this is the battleground for us as well. It's still in the mind. In verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with Him in glory. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. So Colossians 3, 4, and 5. As we think about this passage, the reality is I have to come to the place where my life is His. He is my life. If I've given my heart and life to Jesus, what did I just give Him? I gave Him me. I gave Him me. I really wasn't mine to give, but that's what we talk about. I'm responding to this call, and I'm saying, here I am. Now he's coming. And when he comes in his glory, those of us who have responded will be revealed with him in his glory. In the meantime, and even because of this, consider... The members of your earthly body, your physical self, dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, greed. Because all of those things are not reflective of somebody who has submitted to God. They're reflective of someone who is their own idol. They are in charge of their own life. Jehaziel went on to say, but maybe some people's Christian lens won't allow them to see that his new understanding that he tweeted earlier. And that's cool. Mine didn't either for a long time. I have tasted and seen and my conclusion is that Christianity, it's flawed book, it's bloodthirsty God, and it's mythical Savior. I have found unsatisfactory and unworthy in my allegiance or worse, unless by threatening to kill me if I don't, as Christianity says or does. It's hard for me to see how he got there. If he really ever understood the gospel in the first place. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11. It says, for the grace of God has appeared. Bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny godliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Certainly, not all men are going to be saved. Salvation was brought. Those who understand this clearly in the understanding of election understand this to mean all those men who would be saved. Um, we're, we're not going to resolve all of those biblical issues at this point, but we will resolve this. Anybody who's going to be saved is going to be because, by the grace of God. And it's going to be by the completed work of Christ. And it's going to be by His love. And He's not a He's not a, a bloodthirsty God or a mythical Savior 
or is the word of God flawed book? But until a person understands this graciousness on God's part, go back to the Garden of Eden. Just for a second with me. Go back. What did God tell Adam? All the things in the garden, you can eat all of these things except for what? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil do not eat. If you eat of it, you shall surely die. And so, they did. And spiritually, they died instantaneously. And physically, they ultimately died and they wouldn't. And does any person, all of us having sinned, all of us having rebelled, do any of us deserve <coughs> heaven? And yet in our culture today, some people deserve to have a certain kind of transportation, a certain kind of place to live, a certain level of education. They deserve to have everything, whether they plan for it, worked for it, and now we're taking heaven too. We just ought to be able to go to heaven just because. God ought to be so nice that everybody goes. But the, the thing that we have to understand is that God did everything that was needed to save us from ourselves and from our choices. And to bring us to himself. That is grace. God Himself, God in the flesh, Jesus, would come and live a sinless life and then bear my sin and yours on Himself, on the cross. And to be our sacrifice for sin. That is grace. And that's what we respond to unless we allow pride to keep us away. Today, you and I have always choices to make. And we make those choices, how am I going to live? Am I going to only be happy if and I have the list of requirements of things that have to happen. Then who is God? Well, if God's in trouble because these ten things didn't happen that have to happen every day in my day, then apparently I'm God and He's not. And yet, today, if you've never given your heart and life to Jesus, Really what we're saying here is you belong to God. You're dead in trespasses and sins, just like I was and everybody else in the room that who is who are now saved. And so really, even if you were talking about giving yourself, you're talking about giving to God your deadness and your sinfulness. That's what I, that's all we had to give. We were dead in trespasses and sins. The reality is, is that a mighty, loving, caring God is reaching out to you today and saying, I can give you life and forgive your sins and make you a child of God. This is my call. Respond. Today, if you've never responded to God's call, just like Jeff prayed a little while ago. Today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. We have no promises tomorrow. Today is the day to say yes and to respond to the call of Jesus on your life. But brothers and sisters, there's this walk that we've been called to. And this, this walk is not to just be nice. This walk that we've been called to, it's impossible. Aside from the power of the Holy Spirit, if we're not walking with God daily, 
we're going to stumble and fall. We're going to bring horrible things on ourselves and our family. And we're going to mess up our witness for Jesus. This is not about you earning your salvation. This is about us living in such a way that is in keeping with that salvation, honoring God. So whatever is holding us back, whatever desires, whatever things that are so important to us, those things we have to, we have to lay before the Lord. We have to turn away from those things, not in our flesh, not in our own pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, but in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the truth of God's Word. And He can and has delivered. And so, what shall we do? Shall we start this week and go on with our life just the way that we have on all the weeks before? Or can we today present ourselves as a living sacrifice to God? Father in heaven, here we are. Many of us are just waiting to get out of this room because in our idolatry, there's something that we as God want. We as God want to eat. We as God want to go somewhere or do something. Lord, help us to see the reality of our desires. Forgive us. Lord, if we are living in the control of our desires, we pray that you would help us as your children, as people who have been born again, to confess that and to turn ourselves to you as a living sacrifice and to call out for not just forgiveness, but the power of your spirit to overcome the work of the enemy and spiritual warfare to hold us in this place. living in some attitude of unforgiveness. If we're, if we're determined to have our way on things and our way is not in keeping with your will, Lord, change our hearts. But Father, if there's someone here today who needs to be saved and you're calling out to them now and they understand that in their heart, they know they need to respond. Right now, they'll turn their thoughts toward you and say, Lord God, I, I hear you. I don't hear you in my ears, but I know you're dealing with me. And I would want to be your child. I know I'm a sinner, but I am going to trust in you and you alone to save me. Jesus, I receive you because I know you are my sacrifice for sin and I thank you for dying for me and for living for me. Lord, I will publicly and openly live for you and follow you in baptism. After you've saved me, even now as I pray, in the days ahead, I will follow you in baptism to show the world that I am serious, to be obedient If you're calling someone to be a part of this church family, if you're calling someone to minister, whatever it is that you are putting on the hearts of your people right now, Lord, help us to respond to you in this type of invitation openly and proudly. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand, there's going to be a time of singing. Don't sing if God is calling you to move and to respond. You come. I'll meet you here. Oh, to Jesus, my surrender.
forward for this morning's offering. The rest of you may be seated. Uh, please remember about this uh, Wednesday's meal. If you haven't filled that out in the format from Cypress Hawk, please do so. You can eat with us. And then also the folders in front of you, you can fill those out uh, for us. That would be great, greatly helpful to us as well. Let's go Lord in prayer. Uh, Father, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for this message. Father, we pray that our desire is you, Lord, and in your will and in your ways, Lord. And Father, we pray for Jehaziel. Uh, that the rapper that Brother David talked about, you know, I've heard his, some of his music, and, and he taught your word, he preached your word through, through his music, and, and through the ministry that he had. And so, Father, we know that he understands, um, at least in a, in a mindset, so Father, we pray for, uh, for him to, to realize uh, the truth of your word, not this perversion that he has, uh, that he has con uh, concluded. Uh, so, Father, we pray for him, and for those that, that he's ministered to that are very hurt by this uh, changing him. Uh, Father, we pray for this offering, uh, for this week, for the committee training coming up this afternoon. Uh, Father, for your will to be done, and for, we, for us to obey you in your will.